Hello everyone. Welcome to BioWorks. So I'm starting with a new chapter today that is human reproduction and our topic for today is male reproductive system. Let's begin. So let us start with the male reproductive system in humans. So for convenience, the entire male reproductive system of humans can be divided into four parts like the primary sex organ, accessory ducts, accessory glands and the external genitalia. So let us see what all is included under these. So the primary sex organ includes the testes and generally there is a pair of testes present. Now, why do we call testes as a primary sex organ? Because it is responsible for production of gametes, that is the sperms, and also it is involved in the uh, secretion of hormone testosterone, which is the male sex hormone. Right. Then the second thing, accessory ducts. So, what do you mean by ducts? Ducts are nothing but passages or tubes that are meant to carry some secretions. So, the accessory ducts in the male reproductive system are also involved in carry, uh, carrying the secretions from the various glands and also for carrying sperms. So, these are the accessory ducts that are listed here. Retitestes, vasa efferentia, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct and urinogenital duct. I will be talking about all these accessory ducts in detail in the later section. Moving to the accessory glands. Accessory glands are all the glands that are involved in the formation of semen. So these glands release some secretions which later become a part of semen. So the glands include seminal vesicle, prostate gland and cowper's gland. Remember cowper's gland is also called as bulbo urethral gland. So all the three glands they are responsible for formation of semen along with the sperms. All right. And the fourth one is external genitalia. So what do you mean by external genitalia? It means presence of sex organs that are outside. So external genitalia in male includes the penis and along with the penis scrotum can also be uh, external genitalia. So in this section we learn about the human male reproductive system with the help of a diagram. So I'll start with the testes first, which is the primary sex organ in males. Now, why do we call testes as a primary sex organ? Yes, it is involved in the production of sperms and also it releases male sex hormone testosterone. Now, an important thing to note here is testes is present outside the abdominal cavity. That the reason is because testes is involved in formation of sperms and sperm formation requires a slightly lower temperature, a temperature of 2 to 3 degrees lower than the body temperature is required. So that is the reason testes are present outside the abdominal cavity. So the reason why testes are present outside the abdominal cavity is because testes is involved in the formation of sperms and sperm formation requires a slightly lower temperature. 2 to 3 degrees lower than the body temperature is appropriate for formation of sperms and that is the reason it is present outside the abdominal cavity and testes are present in a sac like structure called as scrotum it is not shown over here because i'll be explaining the detailed structure in the later part of the video coming to the epididymis now you can see epididymis is a network of coil tubule that fits above the testes then epididymis continues as something called as vas deferens. I have labeled vas deferens here. Right. So this is called as vas deferens or also called as a sperm duct. It carries the sperms from the testes into the urethra. So this is the vas deferens or the sperm duct which enters inside the abdomen. It loops over the ureters and joins in the center later to form the urethra. All right. Now, I will explain the three glands here, the important glands. Before that, you can see the urinary bladder here and these are the two ureters. So, the two vas deferens, the two sperm ducts, they loop over the ureters and they join in the center. Now, talking about the three accessory glands, the three accessory glands are the seminal vesicle here. If you can see, this is the first accessory gland. Let me highlight that for you. This is the first accessory gland seminal vesicle right the second one over here you can see is the prostate gland 
there's a pair of prostate gland and the third the smaller gland you can see is the bulbourethral gland bulbourethral gland is also called as a cowper's gland now all the three glands that i have highlighted here are all responsible for formation of semen what is semen semen is a thick viscous fluid that is released at the time of copulation and it contains a mixture of sperms and secretions from all the three accessory glands i'll be talking about these glands also separately all right then after the glands you can see presence of the urethra this is urethra the tube that passes uh, through the penis penis is the external genitalia in the male reproductive system an important thing to note here is urethra in the males carries urine as well as sperms so it is also better known as urinogenital duct all right then the swollen end of the penis is called as a glans penis and it is covered by a loose uh, fold of skin called as a foreskin also called as a prepuce all right so that was a basic structure of the male reproductive system we will now go into details of each part i will now explain the detailed structure of testes first of all the interesting thing to note over here is testes are present outside the abdominal cavity at a certain stage of life so during the early fetal life descent of testis begins that is the testis descends into the scrotum that is outside the abdominal cavity and there is a passage which is called as inguinal canal i'll mention it here inguinal canal so it is the inguinal canal through which the testis descend outside into the scrotum at the end of the fetal development so just before the male baby is born that time the testes descend outside but initially the testes are there inside the abdominal cavity all right now we will look into the detailed structure of testes i have shown a longitudinal section here so i'll be starting with the coverings first you can see tunica vaginalis so this is the external covering of the testes and this is basically the peritoneal covering i'm going to mention the points here this is the peritoneal covering and this is basically an incomplete covering if you can see all right followed by uh, tunica albuginea here this is tunica albuginea and you can see tunica albuginea produces fibers that divide the entire testes into several chambers and these small chambers are called as lobules so these lobules are basically small chambers or small compartments inside the testes so you can say there are around hundreds of such lobules inside each testes all right there is another layer that is present in a tunica albuginea it is not shown over here it is called as tunica vasculosa all right now inside each lobule you can see presence of seminiferous tubule this is very very important to note over here there are around 1 to 4 seminiferous tubules present in each lobule and the main function of seminiferous tubule is to produce sperms now where exactly sperms are produced and how are they produced so the seminiferous tubules are lined by germinal epithelium i'm going to write that down here germinal epithelium is the lining of cells that are present in the seminiferous tubule and this germinal epithelium undergoes meiosis to give rise to the sperms so the process by which the sperms are produced from the germinal epithelium is called as spermatogenesis and it involves meiosis all right now these seminiferous tubules as you can see they produce the sperms and these tubules join over here to form a network of tubules which we call it as rete testis right so rete testis is what it is a network of tubules that is formed by joining of all the seminiferous tubules from the rete testis arises 15 to 20 tubules here these are called as vasa efferentia right you can see there are these single tubules that arise from the rete testis and they join to something called as epididymis this entire structure is called as epididymis now epididymis is divisible into three parts you can see this is the head of epididymis i'm going to write their alternative name that is used there is a latin name from which it is derived this is called as caput epididymis 
caput is also called as head of epididymis then you can see the second one is the body of epididymis the middle part which is called as the corpus epididymis and the third one the tail of epididymis the end part of epididymis is called as the cauda epididymis all right so caput corpus and cauda in other words you can also call it as head body and tail of epididymis now what is the role of epididymis it is involved in maturation of sperms so as the sperms are produced in the seminiferous tubules they travel up to the epididymis where they are stored for a few days until they acquire motility so i'm going to write the function here all the three parts of epididymis they are involved in maturation of sperms so the function of epididymis is that it stores the sperms for few days until they acquire motility so i'm going to mention that here maturation and motility right so that is the important function of epididymis here and then you can see these are the blood vessels and there is also presence of vas deferens the sperm duct present in the spermatic cord which enters inside the abdominal cavity now one more thing to note over here in between the seminiferous tubules there are special cells called as leydig cells i'm going to write that down here leydig cells leydig cells are also called as interstitial cells and they are responsible for formation of testosterone which is the male sex hormone all right so that was about the detailed structure of testes so here i have shown all the accessory ducts so this is the path or the course through which the sperms travel starting from the reti testes as we all have seen in the previous section reti testes is a network of tubules joined by the seminiferous tubules followed by vasa efferentia these are small tubes that arise from the reti testes and they join to the epididymis epididymis consists of the head middle part and the tail where the sperms are stored for a few days until they acquire motility and they become mature and then epididymis continues as a vas deferens also called as sperm ducts it carries the sperms from the epididymis up to the urethra now when the vas deferens loops over the ureters there is something called as ejaculatory duct an important thing to note over here is ejaculatory duct is formed by joining of the vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle and then the ejaculatory duct continues as the urethra that passes through the penis next we will talk about the accessory glands that are associated with the male reproductive system in humans so as we know there are three accessory glands seminal vesicle prostate gland and the bulbo urethral gland also called as a cowper's gland so each of these glands release certain fluid which becomes a part of semen along with the sperms so i will start with the seminal vesicle first seminal vesicle produces secretion which is composed of fructose fibrinogen and prostaglandins so fructose provides necessary energy for the movement of sperms fibrinogen coagulates the semen once it is ejaculated outside the body so that it becomes easy for the propulsion of the sperms in the female reproductive tract and prostaglandins are supposed to induce uterine contractions so that the sperms can easily reach up to the fallopian tube so that was about the role of seminal vesicle now let us look into the prostate gland prostate gland produces slightly alkaline secretion and the main component of the fluid is acid phosphatase it is an enzyme known to neutralize the acidity that is present in the female reproductive tract that is the vagina so that the sperms on their way do not get destroyed and the third one the bulbo urethral gland also called as a cowper's gland produces a fluid that serves as a lubricant for easy passage of the sperms it is also believed that the secretion from the bulbo urethral gland reduces the acidity that may be present in the urethra due to previous urination all right so that was about the functions of all the glands 
we will now talk about the external genitalia in males which is the penis now penis is called as a copulatory organ why do we call it as a copulatory organ because it is involved in the sexual intercourse or the act of fertilization which is nothing but copulation and penis is composed of three bundles of erectile tissues and those three bundles are corpora cavernosa which is a pair and you have corpus spongiosum which is a single erectile tissue so total there are three bundles of erectile tissue corpora cavernosa is present to the posterior lateral side and in the median side is the corpus spongiosum and then the swollen tip of the penis is called as glans penis which is covered by a loose skin called as a foreskin or a prepuce so hope the video was useful to you all don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you